Good day, Sven the Slayer here once again, and welcome back to Star Maid. This is episode 11 of my Practical Logic series, and in today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to build airlocks. Now, unless your lore states you're either a robot or an alien species that can survive in a vacuum, chances are you should be building airlocks into your ships. Now, there's different ways to approach building airlocks, and these can be as simple as you want or as complex as you need them to be, but there is one main attribute that essentially determines how good of an airlock it is, and that is the compression cycle. So you can build airlocks with no compression cycle, ones that have a simulated compression cycle, and those which are the best that have an actual full compression cycle. And the most basic airlock is essentially just two doors that are manually operated, separating the cabin, the pressurized cabin of the ship from the void of space. And you can achieve this also via some activators and the knot gates just have doors linked up that only one door is open at a time. And you can also have just two doors with their own buttons so that only you can only ever select one door at a time and if you link the knots from the switches into the AND from the other one you can actually set it up so only one button is capable of being operated at a time so that neither door will be you know, both doors won't be open at the same time now this design is also nice because de depending on how you wire in the door you can get, either have no compression time or essentially a simulated compression time so right now the knot gate is wired into the door, but if we take the last delay in the chain and wire it in, now there will be a delay between pushing the button and the door opening, and that essentially gives you a simulated cycle time, and then we can do the same over here, and now this one will have a delay, so you push the button, has a cycle time, you walk in, and then you, know, you push the button, cycle time, and then let you leave. And this one also has a memory cell controlling the light, so that just remembers which was the last button pressed. And this is not ideal because there's going to always be that weight whether the airlock is quote-unquote uh, pressurized or unpressurized. So it's, it's not, not ideal, but it's, it's very simple and easy to build. Now, lastly, over here we have one that is... Um, has a programmable compression cycle and this one is nice because if the airlock is pressurized and you're approaching it from the ship side the airlock will door will open immediately and allow you access and if it's unpressurized and you're approaching from the outside of the ship and you push the button it'll allow you access immediately and then you have to cycle it in order to enter the ship so this one's programmed with a very short delay, but you saw the flashing light come on, indicating it was pressurizing, and then the green light turns on, indicating it is now pressurized, and now I can immediately open the door and enter, and then I can also leave immediately, and there's no delay there. But now if I want to exit into the vacuum of space, pushing the button will initiate that cycle time again and open the door, and here it is the same on this side. Now over here I have a longer cycle time so I can show that off and it has the flashing light indicating that the system is pressurizing the light will switch from red to green and then the door will be capable of being opened immediately and then once inside it is the same thing door can be opened immediately to get back onto the ship or I can hit the button out and depressurize the airlock and it has two flashing lights so it doesn't get completely dark in here and allows the door to be opened and then I can exit and this one also has some automatic gravity when passing through this door so that is the probably the best airlock you can build is one that has an actual compression time full light display indicating pressurized or unpressurized and I will be showing you how to build this next so I've already gone ahead and built the frame for my airlock here and for all intents and purposes this will be the inside of the ship and this will be the outside of the ship. So the first thing we're going to need to do is place down our uh, inputs which will be two activators, one that can be accessed from the inside of the ship as well as the inside of the 
airlock and another set that can be accessed from the outside of the ship and the inside of the airlock. So just like that, and we want them both linked to each other, so C and V, so that when one turns on, the other one turns on, and then one turns off, the other one turns off. And the same thing for this side, two activators just like that, just wired into each other. And next up we can set up our pulse limiters, so we want to select one of the activators, it doesn't matter which one, and start by putting down an AND, selecting that AND into a knot, selecting that knot into a delay chain, and I personally like using one second here, but you can make it as long or short as you want. Now select the end of the delay chain and go into another AND. That AND gets wired back to our activator, and then that activator also gets wired into that AND. So now this is our pulse limiter, which controls the doors, and we just have to toggle it twice to get that knot in the correct state. And now we have a functioning pulse limiter, and we can also take the signal from this knot, so select the knot with C, and then shift V on our door, and we now have a working door. So all we have to do is do the exact same thing for the other door. So, and, and, select the and, knot, select the knot, delay chain, and then select the last delay in the chain back into the last and, and then that and back into the activator, and then select C on the knot into the door. Toggle it twice to get the knot in the correct state, and we now have that door functioning. So this is now a simple airlock. So to turn it from a simple airlock into a you know, smart airlock, we're just going to need a memory cell and then the delay circuit. So for the memory cell, we want to take a signal from the activator on the inside of the ship into an OR, and then from the outside activators of the ship, we want to select that and place down a knot, and then select that knot into an AND, and then that select that AND into the OR, select the OR back into the AND. So now this is a memory cell once we get that knot in the correct state. So when I select this activator, it'll be high, and then when I select this activator, it'll be low, so it'll remember the last activator used. So now we just want to take a signal from either the OR or the AND, it doesn't matter which, they should always be in the same state, and go into a delay chain. And this is your cycle time. So this can be, again, as long or as short as you want your airlocks to cycle. So maybe you have a big airlock that you want to take a long time to cycle, and you know just your ordinary airlocks to cycle fairly quickly. So now, I'm just going to match the state here. So when we reset, you'll see that this resets, and then when we set it, you'll see that that turns all high. So next up, we want to take a signal from every one of these delays here, and we want to put it into an AND as well as an OR. So then select the next line in the chain into the AND and the OR, next line in the chain, AND, OR, next, last line of chain, OR, and AND. And for as long as this delay chain, you'll have to do that for every delay. This OR also gets a knot into it. So that OR should be on because those are on. So now when yeah, this, they're also all on, so that should be on. So now when they're all high, this AND is high, and then if we set it, once they are all low, this NOT will be high. So set, once they're all high, this will be high. Reset, once they're all low, this will be high. So this is, this AND here is what tells this um, pulse limiter here to cycle. So we want to C on the AND, a V on the input AND from this pulse limiter, and then from this knot here, we want to take C and then V on this AND here on the outside. So now, when this is reset, and when the, this memory cell is in the reset position, this door can be opened immediately. But now this door cannot be opened until this delay chain has been fully charged. So when I set the memory cell, the delay chain will charge, it'll trigger this AND, which will trigger the pulse limiter, which will then 
turn off the button, or open the door and turn off the button. So that is how it functions, and now all we have to do is rig up the lights, and for the green light, which would be this one, we just have to select this AND, and we can put down all the green lights we want. So let's put a green light there, and we don't want one on that side, it doesn't really matter. And then this knot will be your red light indicator, indicating a depressurized state, so it can do that or something, it doesn't really matter. So now it's green, switching that should turn it red, and then switching it back will turn it green again. So that indicates you know, pressurized and unpressurized. And lastly, to get a flashing light, we'll just have to take a signal from both of these into an OR. And then from that OR into a NOT, from that NOT into a delay, and then the delay back into the OR. And just make sure that NOT is in the correct state. Yeah, just making sure I use the right so now when both of these are low, this will actually flash, and then we can take a signal from that knot there into our orange light, which is the color I use for blinkers. So now when we cycle it, that orange light will flash until one of those two blocks gets set high. And that is, that is the airlock done. That is all the circuit you need. And like I said, you can extend this delay out as short or as long as you want, and you can change this delay depending on how long you want the door open. You can't really break this by setting both. It'll just cycle one way and then reset it and then cycle the other way. It's, it's a fairly robust system. The only way you can really break it is if you actually break the pulse limiters themselves, which is a risk in any delay circuit. So one last thing before I sign off, if you want the alternating lights sh that I showed off in that one, you'll just have to take a signal from this delay here in your blinker. So select the delay with C, and you'll have to po like put a yellow light if you're using orange, or an orange light if you're using yellow for your flashing indicators. Just something to differentiate the two, and it looks really nice. So now when the system is cycling, it'll flash between the two, and it gives a nice effect if that's what you're looking for. Now, another thing to note on this board here, which will be available for download, is that all of this circuit can be easily hidden in the frame of your airlock, depending on how you build it, or like this, you can have a separate room for the uh, circuit itself. It, it doesn't really matter how you do it. It's all, it's all personal preference on that, but this will actually be the module I will copy and paste into my own ships, and to do that, you just have to set the X and Y to 5, and the Z to 9, not 6, and then hit Copy and Paste. I can now paste that into other ships, or I can actually save it as Smart Airlock. And this one has a four second cycle time, but I can easily extend the cycle time another three seconds if I wanted to without having to go beyond the limits of the 5x5x5 five by five by five spa 9 space. So that'll be it for this tutorial. Um, thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video.